Hey guys, when Miss Dennis recorded our writing video yesterday, it came up backwards. So I am going to repost this video so that you guys can see the story today. And if you did not do your writing activity, you can do that today. So for our writing, we're going to be reading a chapter book to go along with it. And it's called The Story of Diva and Flea. And it's written by Mo Williams. And if you remember, he is the same author that wrote the Piggy and Elephant books that you might have read in kindergarten or first grade. So this book is a little bit older book. Um, it's a chapter book. And I want you to first look at the, pa the page on the beginning. And... I want you to try to figure out which one you think is Diva and which one is Flea based on this picture. Now I want for you to listen to the author's voice in this. And we're also going to talk about bold beginnings and how a bold beginning can hook the reader and make you want to read more. So we're going to look at the bold beginning as the first chapter in this story. All right, so the first chapter is called Diva and Flea then. So I want you to think, what do you think that the author means by then? All right, we're going to read the first two chapters for today. This is Diva's story. For as long as she could remember, Diva lived at 11 Avenue La Play in Paris, France. 11 Avenue La Play was a grand old apartment building with a small gated courtyard in front. Many people lived in the building. Kids, parents, old ladies, even an artist or two. And there's a picture, an illustration of the of the 11th, 11 Avenue La Play. And you can even see Little Diva. Like most grand old apartment buildings in Paris, there was a gardener who lived on the ground floor. It was her job to make sure that everything inside and outside the building was neat, tidy, and safe. Diva was the gardener's dog, which meant that Diva was practically responsible for the whole of 11 Avenue La Play, including the courtyard. It was a very big job for a very small dog. Diva took her job seriously. Every day, she would exit the grand front door, trot across the small courtyard, and stand at the building's front gate. From there, she watched and guarded and guarded and watched. And if anything ever happened, no matter how big or small, Diva would yelp and run away. Diva was very good at her job. This is Flea's story. For as long as he could remember, Flea also lived in Paris, France. But at no fixed address, Flea lived wherever he was, which usually was somewhere other than it had been the day before. Flea did not even have a fixed name. Some people called him Puss or Midnight or Richard, but he didn't care too much about what people called him. He liked the name Flea. He thought it was a funny name because he was a large cat and a flea is a small animal. Also, he may or may not have had fleas. Flea did have a fixed occupation, however. He was the flaneur. A flaneur is someone or some cat who wanders the streets and bridges and alleys of the city just to see what there is to see. A great flaneur has seen everything, but, he s but still looks for more because there's always more to discover. Flea was a great flaneur. So we're going to look at chapter two, the courtyard. One afternoon, Flea was having a particularly good time flaneering. The day was barely half over and he'd already discovered a stairwell that led deep under the streets of Paris. There, giant rooms on wheels would suddenly appear and release large groups of people. 
So, thought Flea, that's where people come from. Later, Flea found himself sitting in the sun, watching people who were also sitting in the sun, watching even more people sitting in the sun. Everyone except for Flea was drinking tiny cups of something they called coffee. This is pretty much what people do in Paris, France. Then inside Flea's favorite store, he saw a woman drop a giant piece of salami smack onto the floor. Flea pounced and snatched the salami before the man with the broom could even chase him out an event that was both unusual and delicious. And if that weren't enough, that same day, Flea happened to wander past the courtyard of 11 Avenue La Play where he saw Diva for the first time. As soon as Flea saw the small dog, he was captivated. As soon as Diva saw the large cat, she yelped and ran away. Flea laughed because it was kind of funny. He had seen many funny things in his life but he had never seen such a small dog yelp with such a loud voice. After that, Flea would make sure that most afternoons he just happened to flaneer right past the courtyard of 11 Avenue La Play. It was fun watching the small dog yelp and run away. This went on for many days. Flea would flaneer by. The small dog would yelp and run away. Flea would laugh. It was almost too good to be true. Then one day, Diva didn't yelp or run away. Instead, she looked right at Flea's big face and said, Are you trying to hurt my feelings? Flea had never thought about it like that. Okay, so for our next lesson, we will read some more. But for your job today, we made a prediction on which one was Flea and which one was Diva. So we learned that Diva is the dog and Flea is the, the big black cat. And you are going to, if you did not do your assignment for Monday, or for Tuesday, you are to make a list of things, words that would describe Diva and words that would describe Flea. So how would you describe each of these characters from the story based on what we have read from chapters one and two?